it. It is one thing to get sick. It's another to get sick and not know what you have or have any hope of getting better. Thousands of people across the country are reporting mysterious symptoms and few are getting any satisfaction from traditional medicine. We met two couples battling this mystery illness. More or less dig in the area that the lumps come up in because they get so sore, like something is in there and you need to get it out. This woman believes something is living under her skin. Michelle's body is covered with sores. She says they itch and burn, and she says it started when a bug bit her in the eye. This is sort of the area where the original lesions were, and yes. I'm wondering, when did this one come up? Uh, about five days ago. About five days ago, and is it giving you that, that tingling that you've described under no. the surface of the skin? or no, just the back side of the head. Okay, so the backside of that still feeling like it's crawling under the skin somehow. Yeah, and... bubbling type. Michelle actually has to shave her head to stop the itchiness. She and her husband David have been to almost a dozen doctors, but no one has been able to figure out what's wrong. This one, these are all the doctors I've seen. The eye doctors, this was a dermatologist, this was infectious diseases. And at least one doctor suggested Michelle is delusional. I'm not having a delusion. And he's not having the same delusion, and my four-year-old son was not having the same delusion. And there's thousands of people out there that are also having this strange delusion. There's no question that it's real. But there are things that, that, that are, are uh, clearly real that have appeared on her skin, that, that the loss of hair that she's enduring, um, the fatigue that she's having to go through. There, there's something that seems to be in her system now. Um, we haven't been able to identify it yet. Dr. John Bordock at the Marino Center for Progressive Health is the only physician that's taken Michelle seriously. He's tried lots of different medications on her, and now he's prescribing the antibiotic tetracycline. That same medication seemed to help Rick and Shannon Francis, a couple who says they've lived Michelle's nightmare and have now recovered. They've talked to Michelle on the phone, but don't want to meet her, fearing they'll become reinfected. They're not crazy. They're definitely not crazy. I, my heart goes out to them. I, I know exactly what they're going through. I'd like to help them, but I, I don't want any, any near that I mean, anymore. I don't, I don't know how susceptible I am to getting it again, but I, I surely, if I got it again, I'd forget it. I'm putting a bullet in my head. I ain't gonna go through it again. No way. About eight years ago, Rick and Shannon started noticing sores on their bodies. They still wear the scars today. Yeah, you itched a little bit. Yeah, and then you. And then if it, and then if the little scalp come off it, it would get bigger, and then it'd be like this white, almost like it was like a circular thing. It was like in in your arm. It was like right to the bone. And they believe they got sick from you know, tiny spider-like bugs that took over their home, and then got under their skin. She was on the couch and she was laying there, and she woke up and she said, "Rick, I don't, I don't feel good anymore." She said, "I, I, I got to go to the hospital. I gotta, I gotta get out of here." We got to do something once and for all. It was terrible. It was, just, it, it was a nightmare. Rick and Shannon didn't get much help at the hospital, so they took matters into their own hands. They doused their home's foundation with strong pesticides, ripped up the carpeting, replaced the flooring, threw away all their appliances, even took out their heating system, replacing it with a wood stove. I would have liked to have just taken a match. I would have liked left. to, but. Seriously. It's, it's our house. Why let something take over you? Rick and Shannon also smothered themselves with brewer's yeast and took tetracycline. Today they're healthy, but certainly not back to normal. No, so far in debt, we'll never get out. Look, we owe my parents, we owe my parents thousands, thousands. Yeah. It's kind of rebuilding again. Little by little. Yeah. Now, here are some of the strange things both families experienced. Painful sores that itch and burn. Seeing things that move under the skin. Black specks coming out of their skin. And unexplained fibers or large amounts of dust around the house. It's like something out of the X-Files. You know, closest thing to UFOs. If you give up, you never find an answer. And 
I'm not saying that every question ultimately gets answered, but if you give up, you're guaranteed not to find the answer. So what's going on here? The National Pediculosis Association has an answer. The NPA believes a tiny organism called columbula, commonly known as springtail, is infesting humans. Springtail is found all over, especially in dirt and decomposing leaves. Ever hear of snow fleas? That's springtail. So why does this organism bother some people and not others? No one knows. Casual contact with someone infested probably won't make you sick. The NPA has received thousands of reports from people all over the country with the same symptoms. They've given their data to the Centers for Disease Control, but so far there's been no response. The NPA continues to do more research, and families like Michelle and David's continue to hope. Our life is that. Our life is unknown. <laughs> we are trying to figure out what it is so we can just get over it so we can go out. Very frustrating. Uh, living hell, basically, is what it is. I've lost four years of my life with my son. You know, rather than playing games with him, I'm researching and becoming an entomologist or a parasitologist, which I don't want to be because no one seems to care or help out in trying to figure out what this is. And I'm determined to get better and put an end to it and get on with my life. Michelle is not getting any better since we began this story. The next step for her, get some skin samples to see if she has springtail.